I, he was oh, it was really good. I was like, I thought, oh, you know what? I don't think I could have done a better job than he did. Clap! <laughs> Piss me off. Happy Tuesday, my Tuesday friends. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm starving. I bet you were wondering, does the new mayor of New York City eat a plant-based centered life? I eat a plant-based centered life. Some people want to call me vegan. Vegans eat Oreos and they drink Coca-Cola. I don't. Mm, I guess he does. But what else does he do? I eat a plant-based centered <laughs> life. And those who are the food police for me, uh, they can food police all the time. I eat a plant-based centered life. I eat a plant-based centered <laughs> life. And I'm not going down that... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Please, don't do that yelling out stuff with me. I don't do it to you. Don't do it to me. Uh, I wonder if he eats a plant-based centered life. <laughs> Anything else you'd like to add, Mr. Mayor? I eat a plant-based centered <laughs> life. And I'm not going down this rabbit hole of what do you eat if you eat cake and it has eggs in it that you analyze it. I'm not doing that. The more plant-based you eat, the better and healthier you are. That is my question to those who are following me around in restaurants, wondering what, what I'm ordering. Listen, I'm not doing that. That's noise to me. I got to get New Yorkers to eat a plant-based <laughs> scented life. So I'm thinking this guy really feels strongly about a plant-based centered life. Well, as strong as someone lacking in protein can be. God, I wish I felt as strongly about anything as he feels about plant-based centered life. <laughs> Well, no, this show is my plant-based centered life. Mm. But I guess he wants all New Yorkers to eat the same way. Half of us already do. I think they're called edibles. But maybe I think there are bigger health priorities than this, like not getting murdered. There's nothing you can do better for your health than not getting dead. <laughs> also not getting robbed, raped, or beaten. All those Trump a steady diet of bean curd and soy burgers. You know, I'm happy to eat plants once in a while, but first, just don't turn me into a meal for worms. Of course, it's not Adam's fault. The reporters asked. I'd call these softball questions, but hitting a bull's ass with a bass fiddle would be more difficult. But it's his priority. He already made Friday vegan lunch day at NYC schools, otherwise known as bring your own Burger King day. <laughs> it's always about priorities. What leaders in the media see as threats versus the threats you actually face. Crime is certainly up there for sure. But today, the legacy media has anointed the real danger. And it's not murderers or rapists. It's those evil Canadian truckers. Because nothing says sedition like beeping your horn. Absolutely remarkable. I mean, just think of the language. I know it sounds familiar to you, right? A threat to democracy, a, an insurrection, sedition. Ah, CNN. Even after Jeff Zucker is gone, the stench of the smear tactic still lingers. The network is like walking into a men's room that Stelter is walking out of. Of course, this fiction has less fatalities than a set visit with Alec Baldwin. And there's no evidence offered by these people. But as suspected, expected, they all fall in line like Canadian geese heading south for the winter. The police chief saying his city is under siege, calling the demonstrations a nationwide insurrection. The movement is being called an insurrection by some, paralyzing the Canadian capital. <laughs> Those with the so-called freedom convoy say they're staying put. It's a cult. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, it's so hard to be concerned when we still haven't captured those terrorists at school board meetings. And Canada's PM chimes in, proving that the media and the left always share the same lice-ridden bed. People of Ottawa don't deserve to be harassed in their own neighborhoods. They don't deserve to be confronted with the inherent violence of a swastika flying on a street corner or a Confederate flag or the insults and jeers just because they're wearing a mask. I'd call him a clown, but clowns wear white face. <laughs> so what's the reason for this? Well, Trudeau was born with a silver spoon in his mouth and up his ass. The virtue signaling skunk hates the working class, but also the leg le legacy media is scared. The leggy media. <laughs> the convoy is basically a bunch of Joe Rogans. They aren't buying what the media is selling. So the media needs to create false narratives in which they are the good guys. 
And the average citizen who no longer listens to them, well, they're the bad guys. They're like a delinquent babysitter who blames the kids for the grease fire in the kitchen or the cigarette burns on the sofa. Remember, CNN once cast Chris Cuomo as the good guy. Now they cast him as the bad guy. The demonizing depends on how it protects their butts. So they demonize the so far so peaceful truckers. It's easy to do. They appear whiter than the NHL All-Star game. So I guess that immediately makes them Nazis. However, much of these critics defended the riots and arson that spread across the country back in 2020. They called the violence peaceful. Now they call the peaceful violent. Even today, it's still nothing to see there with those riots, even when they're the actual nothing is murder. Senator Tom Cotton is demanding answers regarding the lenient prison sentence of a man convicted of burning down a pawn shop in Minneapolis that killed a man inside during the, Flo the George Floyd riots. He was given a light sentence, apparently because the killing was committed during the riots. I mean protests. Under Merrick Garland, equal justice under the law is deader than that victim of the arson attack. Murder someone in a media-approved riot, you get sympathy. But if you're some trucker who's never committed a crime, nonviolent civil disobedience is added to the ever-expanding definition of insurrection. You see the game. As long as the left-wing media is losing the war over ideas, they must resort to smearing. No wonder they believe Justice Smollett. It's right out of their playbook. Meanwhile, they protect the side they're on politically, even if that side ends up actually killing people. The White House gets attacked by the left, and there's nothing to see here. Cities attacked by the left for weeks or months on end, nothing to see there. A few hour riot ca at the Capitol, worse than 9 11. And remember, as long as you have parrots willing to play along, the lie will always continue. Am I hearing you right, Congressman? You fear. Potentially, there could be a civil war here in the United States. I do. And, I, and, and a year ago, I would have said, no, not a chance. Our basic survival is at stake, the basic survival of this democracy. Wow. Yeah, right. Looks like CNN has found their Chris Cuomo replacement. I hope he's got a giant Q-tip. Anyway, I wonder what Mayor Adams thinking about. I eat a plant-based centered <laughs> life. Some people want to call me vegan. Vegans eat Oreos, and they drink Coca-Cola. I don't. Oh, they got to put that in the song. Period. Let's welcome tonight's guest. His clothes cause moths to lose their appetite. Founder of theloftestparty.com, Michael Loftus. He's like fluorescent lighting, so bright that it makes most people look bad. Former White House National Security Council aide, Cash Patel. She followed dry January with face down February. Fox News <laughs> contributor Cat Tip. And he changes weather patterns simply by flexing. My massive sidekick in the NWA World Television Champion, Tyrus. <laughs> so, Mr. Loftus, have you been following this trucker convoy from the shelter you're staying at? Ma, <laughs> they took away our TV. They took it, yeah. Well, you know, it's wait, horrible. Sometimes you can't have nice things. You can't. No. I, yeah, I've been following the trucker thing bigly. Yes. That has been awesome. Right. I love it. I love when the protest is parking. Yeah. Right? They don't even have to hold signs and walk around. They're just like, Shh, put it in park. We're changing the world. Mm -hmm. And what a great, what a great thing. I couldn't support them more. And they have all the leverage. They deliver the food. Yeah. If you think about it, like. If, if Nintendo goes on strike, whatever. I'm going to hit up the Xbox. The electricity people go, whatever. Sun's coming up. We need the food people. I need electricity. Really, I, do you? I guess not. More than food? Yeah. But and you that's know, what I love about Trudeau. He's like, we're going to lock them up, eh? What, that's like kicking. That's like asking the waiter, where is my entree, and then not letting them leave the table. Yeah. Oh, that's a good, interesting analogy. Thank you. You know, um, would you feel differently if this were happening in New York City and you couldn't get to where you wanted to go? That's uh, nah. No? Nah, I'd just be like, whatevs, Hong Kong, freedom, baby. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to him? Yeah. I'll tell you what happened to me. They turned I off decided TV, to yeah. live. I decided to start living a plant-based life. <laughs> That's what I, I was enlightened. To... That was the best ever. Like, how long did he talk about that? Well, he would take 45 minutes. Saying that he's not going there. It's brilliant. I... Listen, I'm not going there. I, I will not. <laughs> He feels strongly about I wish he felt that strongly about crime, Cash, but uh, you can talk about whatever you want. You want to talk about the convoy? I, what I noticed is that they're bad appling the convoy. Like, they try to find the very worst element of it and then, and then 
just paint the broad stroke for everything. Like they see a flag, Confederate flag, swastika, and they go, everybody there's a Nazi. That's, I call that bad appling. I That's just, a good one. Thank I you. think it's, I mean, you know this, being a guy, you know, a brown guy, mm. that the Prime Minister of Canada, who is caught brown facing repeatedly, yes. the massive Indian Canadian population. Right. And now you're forcing me to stare at him across the way here, <laughs> standing next to the black mayor of New York City. Like, yeah. these two guys are the, you know, rescuers of democracy and racial diversity. Mm -hmm. So I kind of hate them. Yeah. <laughs> but I like the truckers. They're cool. Mm -hmm. And GoFundMe sucks. Yeah, so they moved all the money over to something Go Send Me, I think that's what Give, it's Send, called. Go. Give Send Go. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It's not. They're no. still going to get screwed. Oh, really? I mean, it, it's a payment processing issue, but that's why I started my company. But that's a story for another day. Oh, Ooh. interesting. We'll have to talk afterwards. Yeah. All right, Tyrus. All right, Gutfeld. Plant-based or, tr or truck-based? You know, uh, well, <laughs> both. But I think the, the, truck, the truckers are do, handling it a lot better than the mayor. I think the brother's in trouble. He couldn't get through dinner at New York. Yeah. He's arguing about what he eats. And he, when you say I'm not going down the rabbit hole, yes. and you keep talking, <laughs> bro, you're in the rabbit hole. You're deep. Yeah. You, Elmer, you can't see Elmer Fudd anymore. Yeah. So, I just, do, you think, do you think because he's eating so, much, so many plants, he thinks he's a rabbit? No, I just, I, this is, I don't know him well enough to really judge him. I just, you know, as a former police officer and stuff, I'm assuming that he's going to be uh, tough on crime to the best of his ability. But I just don't think he's realized what he's taking on with the job, and he's not looking at the, the lay of the land. The last thing the American people want right now is someone telling him what to do. We've literally had to deal with it for the last two and a half years. Mm. We don't need someone else telling us what to eat. And just real quick, it really depends on your DNA, what's best for you, whether it's protein, plants. Everyone's different. You get a little test, and they tell you what's good for you and not good for you. Yeah. So for him to try to push his, his diet is just is a really bad idea given the circumstance. We don't want any more pushed ideas from government. We would like just quiet solutions. He sounds like somebody that really, really into a band and is demanding that you listen to this one song. <laughs> yes. You need to listen to this one song. Yes. It's going to blow your mind, I swear to God. That's how he is about plant-based And it doesn't life. blow your mind. <laughs> it doesn't. Everybody's no. like, this really sucks. This, <laughs> it just sucks. And it, Meanwhile, he's crying. But the one thing I believe <laughs> is that he doesn't drink Coca-Cola because he called it Coca-Cola. I haven't heard that since my grandmother was like, would you like a Coca-Cola? <laughs> I found that so charming. I don't drink Coca-Cola. Like, yeah. Well, neither do we. We drink Coke. <laughs> so, Kat, um, I don't know. What's up? The vegan, <laughs> the vegan diet. Does that, does that, is that of interest to you or the truckers? Uh, I guess truckers are always going to be more interesting than the vegan diet. Yes. But... <laughs> I tried to find a trucker tonight who w was on a vegan diet. None exists. No, I doubt it. <laughs> Yeah, well, Justin Trudeau, his whole thing that he was so mad at these truckers because they're shutting down the economy, he says. It's like, okay, so it's only okay when you do it? Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. I, it's like, are you mad that they're copying you? Because otherwise, <laughs> you have no right to be upset. And it also, this whole thing really negates what he said and keeps trying to say, which is it's just a fringe minority. Because mm -hmm. if it was just a fringe minority, it wouldn't be such a big issue. It wouldn't matter. Right. It's that it is so many people who feel this way that they're worried about getting supplies. So, I mean, he's tried everything but listening. But listening might be might be a good move. Yeah. You were once in a fringe minority. Absolutely. I seem, I seem to remember that. Do you remember him wearing fringe? Yeah, oh, I'll, I'll wear fringe <laughs> yes. like, like I'm in the, the road show of Oklahoma. Yeah. Really? I have no idea what that means. Because I've only ever seen you wear that jacket. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm just curious. Is the Confederate flag a big thing in Canada? I don't know. A huge thing. I've and, never. And I love. I've been there a lot. Really and I never saw. Right, yeah. And I love. Never heard of yeehaw or woo or <laughs> who general are worried shirt. about. This is an insurrection. Yeah. We're headed towards civil war. You know who says that a lot and who's worried about a lot? The dudes who know they're going to lose. Yeah. Mm. You like because if you if you do the like okay so what would the teams be? We have Tucker. We have like truckers, construction workers, small business, and they have some kid who like um. I'm not going to shoot my gun unless you call me Zim Zer. You know? <laughs> I, I think I know who's going to win. Zim Zer. <laughs> hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.